People encounter horticulture in many different ways, and today we're out here at Webster Middle School looking at some of their new athletic fields that have been provided through Fields and Futures. Joining me is Marshall Stockdale, who's with Fields and Futures, and Marshall, tell us about this project and this organization and what you're doing across the city. Thank you. Um, Fields and Futures was founded in 2012, and our mission is to increase participation in interscholastic sports within Oklahoma City Public School District. Our organization, our donors, we have a driving belief that if kids play sports, they're going to stay in school, and ultimately if they stay in school, they're going to graduate. Uh, when we started in 2012 and we looked across the district, you know, there's 15 school campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, across those campuses, there's 44 footprints where a field should be. Wow. And when we started, there was really only about six or seven that were really in play. Um, Webster Middle School was our second middle school and we completed this field in early 2014. So what did this look like prior to what it we're seeing now? Well, Katrinka can tell you, when we first were here, there was a, an old blacktop where there was a basketball court, a lot of flooding. These fields weren't irrigated. There weren't any fences. There weren't diamonds to play. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just imagine what it was like for a coach or a school then, you know, to have to go maintain that field. It's not really a place to play. Right. Most of the schools we've done early have very large enrollments. And so with our mission of trying to drive participation and knowing how it links back to the academic success, mm -hmm. uh, we've been really blessed and lucky to work on some schools that have taken great advantage of the fields. And speak a little bit about that academic success that you know comes from athletic fields. So when we first started, we knew that there were national studies that were done that showed that students that were involved in extracurricular activities, and especially when there was that interscholastic component about needing to make your grades, mm -hmm. that these were students that attended more days of school. These students typically had better GPAs than their peers, um, but greater college aspirations, and you can tell where I'm going. This all rolls up into improved graduation rates, right. and ultimately, we all know through sports and the experiences you have in team environments, the life skills you learn, mm -hmm. and how that's gonna benefit you in the workforce and adulthood. Um, again, because of our unique partnership with the school district, we actually get data. So since then, we've actually seen that theory play out. Uh, Webster Middle School is a great example where when we look at middle school attendance of athletes versus non-athletes, they're attending almost nine and a half more days of school. Well, it looks fabulous out here, and we'll talk with Katrinka about what they're doing right here at Webster Middle School. Awesome. Thank you. Joining us is Katrinka Greer, who's the athletic director here at Webster Middle School. And Katrinka, this is just amazing what's going on. Now, this isn't a typical day. It no, is towards no. the end of your, your semester here. Uh, but well, tell us about how these fields have activate, been activated by the students. Well, first of all, we, we use them for three different purposes. We use them for our athletic teams. We use them for our physical education programs and then when the community gets to use them mm -hmm. after we leave and and sometimes during the time we're here yeah there's no solid yeah. gate so no no everybody's free to come and play soccer there's a track around the whole field so yeah. people are walking right. it constantly walking, walking babies and and jogging there was a lady up here this morning jogging and you and you can tell definitely that the fields are getting a little wear and tear yeah, they just are. because of the use, yeah, which is a, a great symptom. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to move the soccer goals around every once in a while so the grass doesn't wear out, but other than that. And, and tell us, you know, I know we're always trying to get kids outside and away from the technology. Mm -hmm. What has this meant to those students? Great. Well, look around. This is one, few, one of the few places where they can come with their families. If you come up here on holiday, there'll be all kinds of kids up here and soccer players and, and softball players and, and everything. They'll be having, they were hiding Easter eggs up here. So while we say it's a school, a, yeah. you know, athletic it's, it, field, it's really a community it's a community. Field, it's, right? it's, it's kind of a community field. Um, we've got people that, that use the softball field on a regular basis. We've got people that use the track. We've got people that use the baseball field on a regular basis. Uh, the soccer field is always in use. I mean, well, it's just beautiful out here, and we appreciate you joining us and sharing that with us. Thank you. Once again, joining us is Brian Dordery with Oklahoma City Community Foundation. And Brian, the Oklahoma City Community Foundation partnered with Fields and Future in order to make this possible. Well, you know, we're always looking for those opportunities, no matter where they are, at a school, at a park, through a neighborhood, through a park system. 
how do we add this into the community? How do we right. make this before school and after school also? And I think that that's where we've all come together on a lot of this community aspect. Because one of your big things is about activating that's dead right. spaces. That's and right. we've learned that this was just a, right. a weedy field. That's right. Now it's got the athletic field, so we're right. incorporating students. But what did you do in order to incorporate the whole community? Into well, this? I think the thing is you extend the hours. You know, you turn around and you say, during the school year, we're doing good. We're there. But if we'd add some extra trees around it, maybe the walking track was one thing that we came in on. And you turn around and said, okay, how can we make this a track that's going to be able to be used by Katrinka through her track team, through her PE class and all? But what about before school and after school? So what are we doing here to ensure that this is proactive and progressive going forward? I think one of the most you know, important things for me to ask Tim, when we started sitting down at lunch one day and talking about this vision, I said, okay, what kind of turf are we going to use? And they were working close with OSU on some of the turf varieties. And then we started talking about, okay, but it's going to be about the maintenance. How are we going to sustain? He said, we're going to use our own crews. We're going to start doing that. And I'm like, okay, that's going to get us through the first year. We're going to get, what about into the future? So actually there's an endowment that's been formed and and it is at the Community Foundation, and it is for that progressive, so that they'll always have those financial resources to come in and be able to then turn around and do the maintenance up to the level that they need to. Like Adrinka said, you start going from 600 kids to 1,000 kids, then you start adding neighborhoods into yeah. it, then you have pickup games. It's a lot of wear and tear. So it's about how do we help ensure the best we can that this is not just for until the opening is done, but how do we look at this? And you look at these fields, you sit there and say, these have had intense use, intense use for three years now. Well, it's a huge gift that was given to Webster Middle School and to many other schools across the Oklahoma City area. And you can definitely see this space is being activated. Well, we're always looking at that next thing. And sometimes it might be a shade structure like when we started adding drip irrigation to the trees. We've done those type of things just to try to make it as sustainable. Highest level of impact, lowest amount of maintenance is what our goal is. Well, it looks great. Thank you. Oklahoma Gardening would like to thank the Oklahoma City Community Foundation for the work that it does throughout Oklahoma and its support of our program. Since 1969, the Oklahoma City Community Foundation has worked with donors to create charitable funds and bring together and empower partnerships that benefit our community, both now and into the future. For more information about programs and opportunities for giving, visit the Foundation's website, OCCF.org. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. 